So I just got back from Man of Steel. Wasn't that supposed to be a Superman movie? I mean, it had a guy in it who was dressed in what looked like a Superman costume for the most part. But, uh, I'm not really convinced that that was a Superman movie. No. I'm not saying it was all bad. There were parts of it that were actually very, very well done, in my opinion. Uh, pretty much any of the flashback stuff or anything, really, before General Zod shows up on Earth. That's actually quite good. In fact, up until then, I was kind of wondering, well, what's the criticism of this movie about? I mean, it's not... I wouldn't say it was great by any stretch. Well, parts of it were great. What am I talking about? But, uh, yeah, and then Zod shows up, and it becomes really, really... More alcohol. Let's start at the beginning. Uh... Parts I liked. I actually thought Russell Crowe and Kevin Costner were actually very good. In fact, my friend, whom I saw the movie with, we had a quick conversation afterwards. Said he turned to me and said, I'll just say this. This is the first time I've actually been able to say that a movie improved whenever Kevin Costner was on screen. Let that sink in for a little bit. In all honesty, Kevin Costner is very good in this. I liked his portrayal of Clark's dad, whose name, I'm sorry, escapes me at the moment. I'm a... I should know this, but I don't. I'm sorry. Ah, oh, it's late. Anyway, I, you know, I don't even think they say his name in the movie. They just say... He just calls them, they're just called Mrs. Kent, or Mr. Kent, or Mom and Dad. They don't actually, I don't think they say their names. Which is kind of why they're not sticking. I should know them from the other films and from the comics. I'm sorry, I don't. I'm off track. Uh, Russell Crowe, I thought, was also quite good. Uh, I mean, he's a little bit wooden and robotic, but it actually kind of suits the character, who's a scientist. So... Yeah, I, I can buy his portrayal. I thought he was actually pretty good. Uh, the special effects were very good. Uh, yeah, as I say, anything that was exploring Clark's past right up until Zod shows up on Earth, I thought was actually quite well done. It was telling a pretty good story, developing Clark's character very well, or Kal-El's character very well. And then Zod shows up and everything goes to shit. Now, parts I really didn't like. Uh, shaky Cam. Why in the hell did they use so much damn Shaky Cam? It wasn't necessary! You're trying to frame two people in a shot and the, the screen is sh subtly shifting up and down and back and forth while trying to keep everybody in shot. Why? Just have a stationary camera and shoot the scene and pan back and forth a little bit if you want. You don't need shaky cam for that. You're not trying to establish an uncomfortable situation in most of those shots. You're, in fact, in one shot where it's used, where uh, Mr. Kent, I'm sorry, is trying to comfort Clark, uh... Yeah, he's trying to comfort Clark. Why are you shaking? Yes, Clark is anxious, but he's trying to comfort him and calm him down. That should be what's being portrayed in that shot, in my opinion. Just having to jump up and down very subtly for no particular reason is just giving you eye strain. Uh, uh, some of the Kryptonian technology just was like... Why? That's so impractical. Why would you do that? They have these robots that could serve as communicators around, and they have these 
gray areas that can mold into different shapes. Like, for instance, they want to talk to someone else. For instance, uh, Kal-El and uh, Larel or Laura or whatever Clark's mother's name is. Again, I'm sorry, I missed the name. Uh, at one point, Jor-El is trying to talk to her, and her image, or a very blocky, bad representation of her, shows up in this machine's display. And we know from later on in the movie that they have perfectly functional holographic technology. Why in the hell are they showing a blocky, poor representation of her face in that... that, that Okay, maybe if you're talking with a computer, yeah, you don't want it to look too Kryptonian, uh, human. So you want to know that you're talking to a machine, so it's not going to show you a real face. But why would you show a really bad representation of your wife's face in there? That, that That's one of the few things before... Zod shows up on Earth that had me going, what the... what? I... um... In, in fact, a lot of the displays that they use have this really grayscale for 3D kind of looking texture to them, and it was like, you have perfectly functioning holographic technology, why are you using this cartoonish ugly looking display to show this stuff oh yeah the one 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 of the scenes where uh when clark first meets up with i can't remember whether it's his father who shows him this image or whether it's uh, zod who shows him this image uh where it shows the you know how what the spaceship looked like in superman one with all the spikes coming out of it yeah they rather than showing what the new spaceship that Clark is in looks like, they show the one from Superman 1. Why bother? That was... Okay, yeah, it's a little... Oh, look, we, we acknowledge that the original Superman trilogy actually exists, but... Why? Especially when it looks horrible. Oh, uh, I, I haven't even got to the characters. Let me go on a little bit more about the stuff I didn't think worked, uh, special effects wise. When they get the terraforming stuff down on Earth, I'm gonna have to remember to put spoilers in the title because I haven't said spoilers yet in this review. Um, it's, and then Clark, I'm gonna call him Clark, uh, as opposed to Superman because, as I say, he doesn't behave like Superman, is attacking it, trying to stop it, and you know, rather than shooting laser beams, it has this, like, weird tentacle thing that comes out and tries to grab him, and frankly, it looks stupid. That that's seems like the worst kind of defense system they can throw at this thing, and... Oh, uh, more beer. Oh, uh... Okay, characters. As I said, uh, Russell Crowe was fine. In fact, most of the actors were actually not bad in their roles, except Zod and his female general, whose name it's not... I don't think it's the same as in the first uh, Superman 2, but uh, it's obviously meant to be a play on her, so I'm not quite sure if they didn't use the same name or not. The, I think they mentioned it once or twice, and it's... It didn't stick with me. Uh, they, she's not that bad, but Zod, I could have sworn he was just reading lines. It, it sounded very forced, not realistic at all. Then again, some of the stuff he's saying, I'm not quite sure how he can make it sound realistic. Uh, it, he did not seem scary to me at all. I was laughing at him most of the time he was on screen. He was just so... I, I, I know I called 
Russell Crowe mechanical, but it actually kind of worked for his character. Uh, the guy who played Zod, he played it like a cartoon robot. It just... He's supposed to be this military general, but he plays it like a cartoon robot military general. It, it, I'm sorry, in my opinion, it just didn't work. Uh, all right. Um, I know a lot... I'm going to address this, because uh, I know a lot of people have said... Oh, no, every, there are all these people who know who Clark is and why is he working at the Daily Planet. But really, the only one at the Daily Planet who knows who Clark is, or that Clark is Superman, is Lois Lane. I was trying to pay attention to who knew who he was, and there's a bunch of people in Smallville who will know, okay, Clark is Superman. I pretty sure the way this is set up, they can be trusted to keep it secret if anybody talks to them. And from his various jobs, particularly up north, there are people who know him by a different name, but I don't think they'd be smart enough. Or I don't think they'd make the connection that Clark Kent is actually Superman from that. They know, hey, I worked with that guy named Joe. Yeah, quite literally, it's Joe. Up north, and... Yeah, he, he turned out to be Superman. So where is Joe now? I I don't know. He's Superman. I don't know what I don't know what his real name real name is. So yeah, I I, I think anyone who's concerned about that is uh, worried about the wrong things. Uh, action sequences were oh boy oh boy oh boy. Here we go. Well, one, as I say, everything setting up Clark's character right up until Zod shows up is actually... I, I actually didn't have a problem with it. And then Zod shows up. They go up to the Kryptonian ship that's in orbit. And for some reason, Clark, who gets his power from the sun, is having trouble breathing on the ship. Now, this might be something that they changed from the comic books, and if so, fine, whatever. I thought Superman could survive in outer space for quite a long time just by soaking up the energy from the sun without having to breathe. Anyone who's a comic book geek, or a serious comic book geek, please correct me if I'm wrong there. But, I mean, they, do, they even show one scene where he's... He and Zod are fighting in space, so really, what? How were they able to do that if he needed to actually breathe? I suppose he could be holding his breath or having, having expelled his breath, really, so it didn't, you know, pressure all that wet. Um. Uh, the, the, the scene where he's fighting what's her name, and they she brings up, oh. I'm more involved because I don't have morals. No, evolution does not work that way. I shouldn't need to explain that, and the movie shouldn't have to... Movie makers shouldn't need to have that explained to them. That was just stupid. Stupid! I think that was one point where I was like, bullshit, 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 no! Uh, and then they're fighting in Smallville, and Clark tells everybody to go inside, which is... Fine. I know some people have complained that, oh, then he threw uh, buildings at them. Not really. That's more everybody else who's throwing stuff at the buildings. But there's one scene where, I'm not sure if it's a missile or a plane or something, he catches it and then he throws it at this rail yard, which then explodes. And this is Clark who threw this at this rail yard. And I'm thinking, no, he would throw it someplace where it wouldn't hit anything. That's how Superman works. It's just this, it's standard action fare. This is not Superman as I've, okay, yeah, I know I've said before, I don't expect things to be, follow exactly comic continuity, but I still expect the characters to have the same basic personality traits that they have in the comics. 
And that is one thing that holds Superman above everybody else. He will go out of his way to make sure people don't get hurt. And he's... What does he think is going to happen when he... And also to minimize property damage. What does he think is going to happen when he throws a helicopter or missile or... I can't, again, again, I can't, sorry, I can't remember exactly what it is. Everything is such a jumbled mess. He throws it at this rail yard and things explode. In fact, one of the things that explodes comes back and hit and one of the train engine comes and smacks him later on. No, stupid. You're smarter than this. You're supposed to be. Alright, I was talking about when he's up on Clark's when he's up on Zod's ship and immediately after he collapses, okay, I'll buy that he needs atmosphere to breathe. Okay, whatever. He collapses and then it immediately cuts to this scene where he and Zod are in Kansas and just Zod's essentially telling him exactly what he's going to do. Why? Why are they in Kansas? I mean, I know later on that they explain that that's some kind of mind implant or communication thing that's never really explained how they do it, but why was it necessary to put them on that? Why was that even necessary to do the mind thing? He could have him strapped down on the chair and then, then give his dialogue. You can't do anything. You can't protect me. You're strapped down here. I'm going to go down there and screw over Earth. Why was it necessary for him to do it in the mind thoughts thingy, whatever that was? That made no sense. If anyone remembers that visual from the trailers where he's sinking down into the pit of skulls? Yeah, that's from that stupid scene that really served. What was, no, it served no purpose. What was the purpose of that scene? Oh, and I know other people have dwelt on this forever, but... Okay, yes. I kept waiting for, for it because I read this in other reviews, but... Uh, okay, so... They're, Zod and his troops are trying to terraform Earth. No, I, I, I'll actually get to what I want to talk about before, which is the fight scene right at the end. But they blow up the Zod's ship. Clark takes out the actual terraforming thing on the other side of the planet he himself. But then they take out Zod's ship with the hyperdrive by mixing it with Clark's little pod and then creating a black fucking hole. To suck the ship into it and destroy it and... You're creating a black hole in Earth's atmosphere. Are you fucking stupid? Even a very... A I, do I really need to go into the physics of black holes to explain why that is such a stupid fucking idea? Even for a science fiction... Sci yeah, it's a science fiction action movie is what this is. It, it's not Superman. Uh, ow. Oh, okay, so... Most of Metropolis, a lot of Metropolis has been leveled by the terraforming activity because, of course, you know, they have to have Zod ship right over Metropolis, even though... But why is it over Metropolis? Why did it have to be there? And Why did he... There was no real reason for him to put the ship right over a major city. I mean, I doubt even in the DC Universe that Metropolis is the most important city in the... DC Universe, really? What? It, 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 of all the places to put the ship down, why? Just so you can show buildings being destroyed? 
I mean, he put the other one in the middle of the Indian Ocean, essentially, somewhere in Jakarta or whatever, and then, you know, goes right through the... That makes... Why would you just go to, the, go to each of the poles where, you know, you, it's further out of the way of the military in case they actually can come up with something to... Oh, what, whatever, whatever. I, I think you get the point there. That Where they have them set up makes no sense. Uh... The idea is to terraform the planet from one side's here, the other side's here. Yeah, just put it at the poles. That way you go straight through and you don't have to worry about where the mass of the planet is and everything. That may... Uh, or, or somewhere on the equator, even. Where they have it makes... It makes no logical sense at all. Ah, yeah, yeah, I'm overthinking that. I don't, don't, don't care. My review... And then you have the fight scene at the end. If this was really Superman, the first thing he would have done was try, at the very least try, to get Zod away from the buildings that are still standing in Metropolis. Instead, they knock over at least one building, just the two of them fighting, and they must do major damage to others, again, just by the two of them fighting. This is not Superman. No, it's not. Oh, and then the scene at the end. Again, Clark, even if, even his most hated enemy, Superman would not kill him. Some people say, well, why don't they just duck down? That way the light rays don't hurt him. They are in a rather confined area. So yeah, okay. They can duck down. and Here's a simple thing. Clark has him in enough control that he can, that he can snap Zod's neck. Grab them? Fly them up somewhere! What danger are those people... Why Why are you... <laughs> Clap your hand over his eyes! Knock him out! You don't need to kill him! And... Oh, the yell. That was such a... Cliché. <laughs> I laughed. I laughed when he gave his little scream there. That's like, I've seen this so many times before. There's nothing new. Such a cliche. And speaking of cliches, I'll address the elephant in the room, which is the Jesus imagery. The imagery itself, I'll say up front, I didn't have a pr problem with. Not in and of itself. I think it might have been a little overused. It definitely wasn't necessary. When he's, come, he's going to go save Lois and he falls out of the ship like this. No, no, no. You already had the scene where he's like this after he saves the guy in the oil rig. That's in the trailer. That's That was the scene to do that in. Not when he's going to go save Lois from burning up in the atmosphere. That's That was just... That was the superfluous one. Sorry for the clumsy edit, but Steve, Steve likes to curse, Steve Shives just reminded me. The, one of the only places where it really bugged me, if I did admit, I'm going to have to review my footage that I shot, because I honestly can't remember everything. The clumsiest, stupidest scene with the Christ imagery was the scene in the church. Like, yes, we get it already. He was already lying in the cross formation after the rig blew up. That's fine. We get it. But the scene in the church, which is entirely unnecessary, because he already had a similar scene with his mother, the scene before, where he's talking to the the priest about whether he should reveal himself as the, the guy Zod is looking for. And it goes to the priest. 
it, it's one of those shots where it switches back and forth between a shot of pri shot of Clark and a shot of the priest, and behind the priest is a shot of the cross, and behind Clark is this stained glass window with full of Christian imagery. It no, that that's overdoing it. That is overdoing it. Okay, now back to the regular review. What I want to make a comment on there, though, they're selling this to churches from every from the articles I've read. As, oh, this is a Jesus story metaphor. Um, given what I've said about Superman, you know, being extremely careless with where he threw that helicopter or whatever that was into the train tracks. A little bit of the fight in Smallville. Not as much as I thought. But particularly when he's fighting Zod and then has to kill him at the end. Is that really what you want to associate with Jesus? Really? Really? <laughs> Done right. That metaphor that could work and honestly it's again that's another one of these cliche cliches I don't have a problem with it but the way it's done I personally find it insulting if I had it held that in any regard um, that that's just me though other people might feel differently uh, I, I think I already addressed right at the end where he starts working as Clark Kent at the Daily Point okay yeah what journalistic training do you have that you can just suddenly get a job at supposedly the biggest newspaper on the planet, working alongside Pulitzer with prize-winning Lois Lane? Okay, so as I said, no. Lois is really the only one who knows he's Superman. That's it. Except for these people in Smallville. But <laughs> what training do you have? What did you do to convince him you could do this? We didn't even get a scene like in Superman 1 where he's doing the super fast typing thing to type up a resume or type up a story, whatever. But he just shows up to Daily Planet. Hey, he, hey, Lois, here's Clark. You're going to be working with him now. How? <laughs> Nothing we've seen to date in this movie would suggest that he, he could be a journalist. <laughs> oh... I can't call this awful, because the, again, the scenes that actually introduced Clark and built up his character worked. Even the ones, yes, even the ones, and the alcohol's kicking in, a, boy, it must be a lightweight, uh, even the ones with Kevin Costner and Russell Crowe, the, they work, for the most part, they're a little, as I say, issues with the technology, or whatever, but, once you get up to Zod, the movie just falls apart. Uh, three, four out of ten. I've definitely seen much worse, but as far as disappointing movies go, yeah, th this was worse for me than Iron Man 3. I know I didn't do a video review of Iron Man 3. Anyone who has me on Facebook, there's... I put a note on there, going through all my problems with Iron Man 3. It's just rolling the more I think about it. But in the end, I could still say I came out of Iron Man 3 relatively entertained. And there's probably more good in there than bad. But this one... That's the direction you want to take Superman? Really? <laughs> in all honesty, I, I think... Batman from Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy behaved more like Superman than Superman in The Man of Steel. Think about that for a little bit. All right, I've rambled for oh frick, I'm over 28 minutes now. Um, uh, peace, uh, sorry, peace, live long and prosper, and I'll talk to you folks later. Firefly 404 out, stay shiny.